boom, here we are. <laughs> yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Bridges Nashville, guys, this is our online service, and we are in our home, in our living room, and we just want to hang out with you guys today, okay? This is unedited, unrehearsed. Oh, boy. And so we're not going to go back and edit anything. What you see is what you get. Uh, but uh, you guys, too, you know, we're here to interact. Feel free to put something in the, in the chat. We've got several people on. Heather, mm -hmm. I don't know if you see some of those names. I do. I see Lisa. Good morning, Lisa. Sub Lisa. D. Curtis. D. Curtis. Thank you, guys. I know Sarah Trevino's on there uh, in the chat as well. So thank you, guys, for tuning in with us here uh, at Bridges Nashville at our home today. This is our online service, our fourth Sunday, and uh, we're going to be closing out Stories of Faith. I'm going to share a brief word, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we've got some testimonies that people have sent in that we're going to read those as well. I believe it's good when you take time to share another person's mm -hmm. testimony uh, because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When we can see God move in somebody else's life, it encourages us mm -hmm. and it gives us that hope and that, that faith that if God can do that for them, then he can work in my situation as well. So we're going to be sharing some of that. Uh, but uh, first things first, uh -oh. right, Heather? Like I said, I caught her off guard. She doesn't know what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do. First things first, guys, we, you know, the Bible says give honor to whom honor is due. And uh, we've got a very special person in the house with us today mm -hmm. in the studio right here that helped put all of this together. And today is his birthday. I don't know if we can get him to step behind the, 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 the scene back there, but Joseph, come get in the shot with us. Today is Joseph's birthday. And uh, man, we didn't want to forget that. So happy birthday. This is a dear friend <laughs> for many, many years. I'm sure his wife is watching right now, Norma and the kids. So thank you so much for all you do, Joseph. Give him a hand clap. Happy birthday. Now, Heather's going to sing happy birthday on the count oh, of three. Yes. We're not going to do that? Because yeah. what? We, do we, we want to lose our audience? Okay, we would have to edit. <laughs> then we would okay. have to edit. Yeah. And you definitely don't want me to <laughs> sing it. I need to stay in my lane, okay? So I could Happy birthday. Or we can do the, the Stevie Wonder. Happy birthday to you. I'll dance. Okay, just, you know, uh, there, that, what you see is what you get. So, uh, but we wanted to just uh, do that to, to Joseph. Happy birthday. People are telling you happy birthday online right now. There's, there's Don Barrett. Hey, man, Joseph got a lot of fans in the house. So thank you guys for tuning in. But we want to jump into just a word of encouragement as we've shared over the past several weeks, just stories from the Bible mm -hmm. to help build our faith. And I believe that is so important uh, with uh, a lot of things that are going on in our world today, things that are happening and tragedies and a lot of bickering and fighting. And it, it's good to go back to the Bible, to go back to that foundation and see God move through people's lives uh, in the Bible because it gives us faith today. And I want to I wanna share briefly with you. I'm not going to go over the whole story, but I want to encourage you. We're going to be in 2 Kings chapter 4 talking about the Shunammite woman. Uh, this is the woman who lived in Shunem, uh, but a very uh, powerful story there, and we're going to learn a lot from her. But go through that story in its entirety at the end of this broadcast. It's where you have that time to dive into the Word of God. Uh, but one of the things that, that I took away from that story with the Shunammite woman is uh, no matter what the tragedy was that she was faced with, uh, she would always respond by saying, it is well. It is well. And I think about that, Heather. You know, what do you do when everything is not okay? You know, is it okay to not be okay? You know, in those, in those situations, because we all been through the seasons of life where we were believing God for something and it didn't happen, mm -hmm. you know? And is it okay? Uh, what do you do when everything's not okay? And what do you do when things are horrible? You know, what do you do uh, when your faith has been shaken at its core? What do you do when the marriage is, is, is struggling? What do you do when the kids are out of control? Anybody got kids out there? You, got, uh -uh. you know, what do you do when you're, <laughs> you're trying to keep the kids in check and keep them, uh, uh, you know, from, from just, just going crazy and all that good stuff? So what do you do when what you see by faith is not what you see with your natural eyes and circumstances? Well, I'm glad they asked that question. 
because we're going to answer that today as we dive into this Shunammite woman. So in 2 Kings chapter 4, I'll, I'll paint the story and then uh, I'll go deeper into the scripture. Uh, but this is where the prophet Elijah, uh, when he would journey on his travels and he would go into the places that God told him to go to, uh, he would pass by this couple's house that lived in Shunem. And the lady told her husband one day, hey, let's, you know, the prophet comes by here all the time and let's do something for the man of God. So they actually built him a little house uh, that was uh, an addition to their house. So kind of like one of those little projects, tiny a tiny home. So I'm, I'm about to go way off right now because I want a tiny home. That's, yeah. that's my dream is to have a tiny home. I would even do that right now, you know. My wardrobe won't fit in a tiny home. Well, we have to downsize. So I would do that even right now. I'd sell and go get me a tiny home. And so that's what they built the prophet, a little tiny home in addition to their house. And so every time he'd come by, he'd have a place to stay. And the prophet of God, he didn't take that for granted, but he was like, man, I want to do something for this family, for this woman who went overboard to make us feel welcome and to uh, a place of rest for us. So he called his servant and, and said, hey, go, go call the Shunammite woman, get her in here, and, and we're going to do something for her. And I love this as we go to the scripture, 2 Kings chapter 4, I'll start uh, with the, let's say, 13th verse, he's, he's talking to her and he said to his servant, say now to her, look, you have been concerned for us all this care, meaning you've built a house for us. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? So this prophet wants to do something favorable for her because he didn't take that, that act of service, that kindness, he didn't take it for granted. And verse 14, so he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi, his servant, answered, actually, she has no son and her husband is old. Verse 15. So he said, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. So she was like, hey, don't be don't be playing tricks with me. You know, she was, you know, think about that. They didn't have any children, didn't have a son. So the prophet is like prophesying over her this time next year, you're going to have a son. And verse 17 says, but the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elijah had told her. Now, I love that because we've all been in situations where maybe God spoke something to us and and we didn't, you know, we were like, I want to believe that, but I don't want, I don't want to be let down. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to be discouraged in the midst of that. And when we get to that point and the miracle happens, then we rejoice. You know, Heather, I remember when we were uh, struggling to have children. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Of course you remember. <laughs> I do. Actually, when you were reading that scripture, it, I, it brought it up to me, that exact same thing, is that when we were trying to have kids, I remember feeling like we were promised we from God that we would have kids, but it was a struggle. It was hard to see everybody else getting pregnant around you when when you were trying when we were trying to get pregnant. Yeah, yeah. So and that's the struggle. And it's like, God, I, I'm trying to hold on to this word, mm -hmm. but my current situation is saying otherwise. You know, what do you do? What do you do? What is your spirit saying? How do you are you are you trying to faith it? Uh, you know, kind of like fake it till you make it. Is that a faith statement? What do you do? And so here this woman has reached a place where oh, the word of God came to pass and she's got her son now. But we all have those moments where something blindsides us. So in verse 18, this is where we get to the to the to the meat of this story. And the Bible says, and the child grew. Because they do that. They do. They grow and they eat up everything eat in your house. They, yes. <laughs> so, and the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. So he's out working with his dad in the field. And he said to his father, my head, my head. Like his, he's got this headache. His head is hurting. So he said to his servant, carry him home to his mother. Kind of like his dads do. Go 
Go, go to mom, go to mom. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. Now, can you imagine that? This is a woman. Once again, God, I was believing your word. It came to pass. There was much joy. Now the promise is dead. It's gone. And so in that moment, you got to ask yourself, how would you feel? How would you feel? How would you feel? And it doesn't have to be a, a child. It could be maybe you're believing God uh, for that promotion at work and somebody else gets it and it's gone. Like, whoa, how mm -hmm. am I, how am I going to feel? Or you, you were believing uh, for that, that car, whatever it is, and it didn't happen. And it's like, oh, it's gone. What, what? You would feel devastated. Dev devastation. Devastated. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know. And it would, it would shake your faith. Mm hmm and it would cause you to, to maybe even doubt God or, or prevent you from believing him for something in the future. And this is where we want to hone in because we do serve a good God and we serve a God who's faithful. So uh, it says, uh, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. So she took him up to the room that they had built for the, for the prophet of God. And she laid him there. Then she called to her husband and said, please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, the husband said, why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. Like it's not time to go have church. It's not time to go uh, uh, get a word from God. And she said, this is where I want to hone in. And she said to her husband, it is is well it is well somebody say that with me or type it in the type it in the comments if, if you if you hear us talking it is well it is well and i love that because she didn't get into any uh debate with him she didn't even go into the problem she didn't even communicate to her husband the problem mm -hmm. sometimes we keep stuff to ourselves because we have to process what's going on and can you imagine that have you ever told somebody what was going on and they made the situation worse. <laughs> Think about that. You know, you do that to me sometimes. You're like, I shouldn't have even told you that because now you're going to worry. You got. <laughs> yes, that's true. And she didn't even tell her husband that their son had died. She said, "It is well." And I believe with all my heart that was that faith statement, mm -hmm. because in all reality, guess what? It was not well. I was going to say, it wasn't well. She, I, I wouldn't have been well in that situation. So that was a bold statement for her to make, to say it is well. It is well. And, and we've, got to, we've got to investigate that statement. I see other people on. Rick, hey, what's up, Rick? Judy, it is well. People commenting right now, it is well. Uh, Norma, Joseph's uh, wife is watching as well. And uh, we should have tried to get Norma in here to sing happy birthday. And, and yeah, we'll, we'll do that next time. But she said, it is well. And that's a statement. That's not a lying statement. Mm -hmm. That's a faith statement because we hit seasons and moments in our life where we're devastated, but we're not going to speak out the devastation. We're going to choose to say, it is well, meaning God is in control. It is well. It is well. And that's all she said to her husband. And then she, she, she got on the donkey. They, they started going. Uh, and she went to the man of God, and there he was, saw her coming. And I'll jump back into the scripture here. It says in verse 25, So it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant Gehazi, Look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? So he's asking three questions. Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? Those are three questions that any moment she could have answered in a different way. But the Bible says, and she answered the prophet, it is well. Now, once again, you think right there, she could have just lost it all. Mm -hmm. I know it's not well. And, and that's OK. You know, I think as, as, as Christians, but we're going to learn from this woman. But I think sometimes, Heather, as Christians, we're taught when somebody asks you, how's it going? We've got to, no matter what we're going through, it's like, I'm blessed and highly favored. God is good. But, but sometimes, you know, I like to freak people out sometimes when they say, hey, how you doing? Horrible. What? You know, because we're human. Yeah. That's reality. 
You know? How's the Lord treating you? Well, I don't know. Right now, I'm not feeling too good. <laughs> you know, you just got to. And, and this woman could have responded that way. Mm -hmm. And because he asked her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And all she said was, it is well. And in that moment, she kept it to herself, to where she didn't even tell the prophet. This is where I believe her faith is totally in God in this moment. Because even the prophet goes on to tell his servant, hey, God is hidden. I see, I see something on her countenance. She hasn't revealed what's going on, but, but even God hasn't. God has kept it from me. And, but he knows something is going on. And finally, as the story goes on, and once again, I encourage you to, to read through that in its entirety, I wanted to dwell on the fact that she was in a bad place mentally, emotionally, and that's physically, physically, exhausted. Mm -hmm. But her mind was set, it is well, it is well. And the prophet, finally, they figure out what's going on. The prophet goes into the room and he, he stretches out over the boy and he prays over the boy a couple times. And finally the boy, I think it says he coughs or sneezes and comes back to life and she receives her, her son. And, and when I think about that, at any given moment, she could have called 20 people and just broke down, hey, my son's dead. And they would have immediately went into, okay, let's, let's get, you know, we're going to be with you, support you. Let's get the funeral arrangements, all this stuff. But I believe her mind was fixed on, no, God gave me this child. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm going to have this child. This, this child's going to come back home. This child's going to wake back up. Uh, but she just kept confessing it is well it is well and that's a once again that's a that's a faith statement that's a bold statement that's when you're going through uh some some serious uh mm -hmm. situations and you've got to make that decision is your faith going to be in god or are you going to just let the circumstance around you uh squeeze that faith out of you and i, I know it's easier said than done because we all go through uh, those situations where it's like, God, you know, once again, we were trying to have kids. God, where are you? Mm -hmm. You know, I remember those moments. Mm -hmm. This actually really has brought something up that I've been thinking about as, as you're sharing this scripture is that um, about a year ago, well, not quite, or almost a year ago, Grayson got sick and we re he was in the hospital. And I remember thinking that he was going to be okay. Tests didn't show he was going to be okay, but I kept thinking, Grayson's going to be okay. This is all going to be okay. And just last week during church, I remember putting, Grayson had had a lump on his neck, and I re remember putting my hand on his neck, mm -hmm. that spot where he had that lump, and God just kind of reminded me of that promise. So it's kind of ironic, as you're sharing the story, that we're talking about um, the woman and having children and Grayson was our promise. And then uh, very similar, he was wound up in the hospital last year. Yeah, and for nine days, yeah, nine days in the yeah. hospital and just a, yeah. a hard time for all of us. And in that moment, it wasn't well. It no. didn't feel no, well. No, it didn't feel well at all. But overall, it was well. We knew he was going to be okay because yeah. we believed that he was a promise from God. Yeah, so. yeah. And in those moments, and. You know, I think about that often as well. And in, in those moments, uh, when you're in those type of situations, I think it's totally hitting that moment when you place a situation or circumstance or even a person in God's hands. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what the Shunammite woman did. You know, she placed her son in God's hands and she wasn't going to let anything come out of her mouth that was going to be uh, anti what she was believing God for. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's, you know, uh, not talking to people, you know, you know, she told her servant when they were going, she goes, don't stop for anybody. Just keep, let's, let's go. We don't have time to stop and talk and chat. And if you were to break that down in today's world, it's like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna post about it. We're not gonna, we, we, we just, we're gonna stay focused mm -hmm. and we're gonna get to God. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get to God. Uh, we're not gonna invite opinions in, uh, into our situation. And I believe that's what she did. And, you know, sometimes we've got to go on that journey where we must understand everybody cannot handle what you're going through, mm -hmm. you know, and they just can't. <laughs> That's just God's honest truth. When you're going through something, everybody can't handle that. You know, when, 
when we, uh, I remember when we were trying to have our second child, we had a miscarriage in between the, the two children and we didn't, we didn't immediately go out and, and post it. We didn't, we didn't do anything. We didn't call 50 people. We told a handful of friends that were close to us uh, uh, Joseph and Norma were one, and we, we told them, hey, pray for us. So, uh, meaning you got to be selective as well. And, and, and I'll be honest, too, sometimes in this Christian arena, uh, Christians can say some, some, some off-the-wall stuff. You know, they could mean good, but just be totally far off. You know, they can say things like, well, maybe the Lord didn't want you to have that child. Like, what, what kind of stuff? You know what I mean? Or... or or you've, maybe you've heard this before, or maybe somewhere in your life you opened up the door to the devil, and this is why the, and, and you start thinking, maybe I did open up the door to the devil when I told you what was going on in my life, you know? So I got to shut that door, and, and you got to just be real selective of who uh, you allow to uh, come on that journey with you while you're believing God for something. This is where your faith has got to be so determined like this woman's was. And the funny thing about it, I don't even know if, like the husband didn't even know what was going on, you know? She kept it from a lot of people, but she kept it between her and God. Mm -hmm. Kept it between her and God. And I don't know uh, who's logged on today, uh, but I believe you've logged on for such a time as this. Maybe you're going through a situation uh, where your faith has been tested and shaken. And, and you're having to go through a season where you're having to, um, it's kind of like, you know, vet who you allow to come on that journey with you. And that's okay because you need people of faith around you uh, that are going to, uh, uh, you know, hear what you're believing for and say, I'm going to join my faith with that. I'm not going to. I'm not going to join my opinion with that. I'm going to join my faith with that. And there's a difference between faith and opinion, okay, or faith and your personal experience. A lot of people, they speak out of their personal experience. Well, you know, uh, this is what you should do. Uh, you can't faith. In some moments, you need faith to keep moving forward, okay? Look at that. I love what Don said. I, this is where we got to you know, dive into some comments as well. And I want to keep that, that comment uh, with that. Uh, as we talk about it as well, and as, as Christian people, how should we approach situations? How should we, when we hit moments where uh, it seems like, hey, this is a hard situation. Uh, so I love what uh, Don Barrett said this. Uh, the man DC himself. We all have time, talent, and treasure. We should, as Christians, share with others. We often focus on money or our work skills, but our experiences can be of such value to others going through similar conditions. That is mm -hmm. so on target. Mm -hmm. That is so on target right there, guys. When we, when we go through a journey, and it's that journey that becomes of high value in the kingdom of God, you know? And that journey is going to connect people with faith, okay? And that's what I mean by that. When, when God does something in your life or he takes you through a situation, then, you know, that's a faith builder. That is, that is never for us to take a, a disappointment. Like when we had a, a miscarriage, we would never tell somebody, maybe the Lord didn't want you to have that child. No, we would, we would say, we've been there before, mm -hmm. but... But we had certain people to help us and pray, and we just kept believing God. That's the experience that you want to deliver. Thanks for sharing that, Don. Guys, if you've got anything you want to put in the comments, feel free to share. Uh, but I want to go back to this woman as she received her son uh, back uh, from death. I believe her faith was so locked in that uh, she was okay. I'm going to go back to, to verse 35. This is the prophet going back and forth as he was praying for the child. He returned and walked back and forth in the house and again went up and stretched himself out on the child. Then the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes and he called Gehazi and said, call this Shunammite woman. So he called her and when she came into him, he said, pick up your son. So she went in, fell at his feet and bowed to the ground then she picked up her son and went out. I love that. You know, she's in that moment. 
she still believes in God. The prophet is up there and uh, he's praying over the boy, going back and forth. But she's still in that it is well moment. It is well moment. And in that, I love that. He said, pick, uh, come on in here and pick up your son. So I'm telling you guys, we serve a God who is still able to perform miracles today, today. And as we're learning from this woman's experience, think about that, you know, that is something. That is, that is, who you know, I don't even know how I would react in that situation. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I would remember this story and say, if God did it for the Shunammite woman, mm -hmm. then he can get me through this situation. It is well with my soul. And I think she even hit a moment to where when you're trusting God, that is trusting God for his will. God, let your will be mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens, it is well. And I think as Christians, that's our, that's our, our goal, that situations and circumstances don't determine whether or not it is well. Mm -hmm. God determines it is well. Our relationship with him is the determining factor if it's well with us or not, you know? Mm -hmm. And as, as I close this, this is my first closing. They know this is my first one. Uh -oh. And then we're going to shift on to uh, answer some questions and then share some testimonies. Or we may do that in reverse. I don't know because we did not rehearse this. And, but we're all going to um, continue to have a little fun. Uh, what was I going to do? Oh, I was going to share a story with you guys. If I can, if I can just share this story. Uh, this is, you know, one of my grandmother's favorite songs was It Is Well With My Soul. It Is Well With My Soul. Now, I'm going to take you back old church right now. <laughs> it Is Well With My Soul. And I, I remember, you know, uh, looking that, that story up. And it, it's an old hymnal, It Is Well. And I'm, I'm kind of an old soul and old school when it comes to... Um, worship music or just, you know, worshiping God. Uh, I love those old hymnals. I don't know if anybody's watching right now. If you love those old hymnals, let us know in the comments. But I love those old hymnals because when people wrote those, Heather, they were not in a writing session with a group of uh, musicians or, or songwriters. They were not trying to uh, come up with a song for an album. They were not. They, that, when they wrote those, they wrote those out of what they were going through. What, what God was taking them through. These were life-giving songs as you, as you read some of those hymnals. And I, I began to do some research on uh, the guy who wrote It Is Well With My Soul. And as I thought about the Shunammite woman, uh, his name was, and I'm, I'm gonna be reading just a little bit of it, <clears throat> excuse me, but his name was Horatio Spafford. He was a successful lawyer and businessman in Chicago with a lovely family, he had a wife, Anna, and five children. Uh, uh, however, they were not strangers to tears and tragedy. Their young son died with pneumonia in 1871. And in that same year, much of their business was lost in the great Chicago fire. Yet God in his mercy and kindness allowed the business to flourish once more. And then later on, uh, his family was set to take a trip. Uh, he decided he was going to send the family ahead of them, Anna and their four remaining children, and he was going to stay behind and, and wrap up a few business issues, and he was going to catch up with them. And about four days into the crossing of the Atlantic Ocean, uh, the ship that his family was on collided with a powerful iron uh, Scottish ship, and suddenly all of those aboard were in grave danger. Anna hurriedly brought her four children to the deck. She knelt there with Annie, Margaret, Lee, and Bessie, the children, and, and Tanetta and prayed that God would spare them if they could, if, if that could be his will. So he prayed, God, spare them if that is your will. Or to make them willing to endure whatever awaited them. Within approximately 12 minutes, the ship slipped beneath the dark waters of the Atlantic Ocean, carrying with it 226 of the passengers, including the four Spafford children. Now, a sailor rowing a boat over the spot where the ship went down spotted a woman floating on a piece of the wreckage. It was Anna. It was Horatio's wife, the mother of the children who, who died and were drowned in the water. Where the ship went down, spotted a woman floating on a piece of wreckage. It was Anna, still alive. He pulled her into the boat, and they were picked up by another large vessel, 
which nine days later landed them uh, in Wales. From there, she wired her husband a message which began, Saved alone, what shall I do? Mr. Spafford later framed the telegram and placed it in his office. Another of the ship survivors, Pastor uh, Weiss, later recalled Anna saying, God gave me four daughters. Now they have been taken from me. Someday I will understand why. Mr. Spafford booked passage on the next available ship and left to join his grieving wife. Now you think about this. He wasn't even there. Could be blaming himself. A lot of emotions are going on. So he, he got on the ship, went to go join his wife. With the, with the ship about four days out, the captain called Spafford to his cabin and told him they were over the place where his children went down. According to Bertha Spafford Vester, a daughter born after the tragedy, Spafford wrote, it is well with my soul while on this particular journey. Isn't that something? He wrote the song while he was going to his wife to console her after learning that their four children had drowned. And that is something, guys, in that moment, I believe this is when you're, the, 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 the gut-wrenching and your heart is torn. But he wrote that song, and many of us today, we still gleam and we draw from those words today. Uh, four verses in the song, it says, When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Those are powerful, powerful words, Heather. And that is, that is a man that was in the middle of tragedy. And this song came out of his spirit. And that's why I love those old hymnals. Uh, I'm not saying I, I, I love what we sing today, but, but the old hymnals just carry so much power and meaning. And he wrote that song, and it inspires and just it refreshes many of us today. And once again, I remember my grandmother walking through the house all the time singing that song, It Is Well. Uh, with my soul. It is well with my soul. And, and I just want, if I can leave you with anything, guys, know that you serve a great God, amen? A good God. And it's, it's well with our soul when we trust in him. He said, whatever my lot, meaning whatever is going to happen, God has taught me to say, it is well with my soul. And I hope that is our prayer and our, our belief today uh, as we uh, continue this journey of life. And we never know what's going to happen but we know who's in control, and that's God. Amen? Amen. You got any closing thoughts on that, Heather? I, I'm going to throw it to you, and I'm going to get some other papers that I have over here. I mean, that's as powerful as a father, as a parent. I mean, to lose four children and to still say it as well, I mean, that's really powerful. That is. That is. That's, a, that's when you know you're trusting in God mm -hmm. the whole entire way. Your, 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 your trust, your faith, everything is in God. It's in God. Now, we've got some, some testimonies that a couple of people have sent in. I love that. And, it, and guys, you know, this video is going to go on. So if you've got a testimony you want to share, put it in the comments and people will go through those comments and read those. But we also have, uh, do we want to do the questions or the testimonies first? Testimonies. testimonies. Stay, stay, we'll stay in the vein of the testimonies because yeah. this is that at faith building. Uh, but we have some. We have. I think these these ladies are on today. We've got D uh, watching all the way from Wisconsin. She's one of our faithful faithful viewers. But she's also just a dear friend of ours. Used to be here in Nashville, so we love her uh, with all of our hearts. But uh, she wrote in her testimony uh, back in 2016. She was diagnosed with lung cancer. Uh, they removed part of the lung. Uh, then they found, in 2017, found a uh, seven centimeter tumor found in her brain. Uh, that had, she had surgery to remove that, uh, chemo, radiation, uh, then uh, immunotherapy, a uh, slight stroke in 2020 caused by scar tissue, uh, double pneumonia last year caused by the, uh, uh, what is Immunotherapy. Immunotherapy, I said it once, I just mm -hmm. couldn't say it again. Uh, my last cancer treatment was March 2nd, 2021. Right now, she says, by the grace of God. Come on. By the grace of God. She says, no cancer in my chest, uh, my abdomen, my brain. Uh, my testimony is praise God. Praise God. And I love what she says. She goes, there are times where I've been anxious 
but never afraid. And that's where God keeps you at that perfect peace. We've all been in those moments where we've got to go to the doctor and get testing for something. And I get like that. What's the test? That's when the enemy really tries to bombard us. Mm -hmm. And what is that test going to say? She goes, I've been anxious, but never afraid. And that's when you know, Dee, thank you for sharing that, that when we go through those trials and those situations, uh, it, it's easier to throw in the towel, but we, or we can keep our trust in God. And because he will keep us at perfect peace if we trust in him. And that's one of those, it is well, going from one situation to another. It's easy to say, man, everything is going from bad to worse. No, let's say everything is going towards God. My faith is going towards God. And when we have that kind of tenacity, I believe God uh, can walk us through it. And then Lisa is on as well. Uh, I believe she's watching. Thank you, Lisa, dear friend of the family. She's uh, a faithful member of the church as well. Uh, and David. And David. David's uh, her, her, her husband, just amazing couple, guys, that we've known for years, just dear friends of our families. Uh, but Lisa sends in a testimony. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read that, and then we're going to jump into some questions as well. Uh, but Lisa shares, she goes, my daughter uh, prayed for 10 years for a baby. And then one, one year after, my other daughter, so Lisa was going through a situation, uh, my other daughter passed away. Here comes our grandson, James. So Lisa had uh, two daughters. One daughter passed away, and the other daughter is praying for a, a child. Uh, here comes our grandson, James, who we felt was God's little ray of sunshine to our family. But he didn't speak for his first two years and was diagnosed as being uh, on the autism spectrum. She says, I was weary of praying for my daughter uh, for 10 years, uh, eventually losing her here on earth. So she was praying for her, her daughter for a long time. And, that, and, and, and I love that because Lisa's honest, like weary. And we hit those moments where we get weary, mm -hmm. we get tired, we get discouraged, mm -hmm. but we make decisions to press on and, and press through. She says, I told God how I felt, something like, I know you can heal, Will you in this situation? Because I'm too weary to get my hopes up for nothing. Once again, I love, that's being real as real can be, real. Uh, three days in a row, my online word of the day popped up with some, the same scripture, Mark, 23, Mark 9, 23. I believe anything is possible to those who believe. I felt God was inviting me to trust him to heal my grandson. My God wouldn't tease me with false hope, so I got excited about believing for a miracle. Long story short, uh, but about two weeks later, my daughter called me and said, Mom, he's turned a corner. Man, we love that. Mm -hmm. He's turned a corner, meaning you see those prayers and you see God beginning to, to work in that situation. He's turned a corner. He's talking, saying words and trying to read the books you read to him, pointing at pictures and saying ball, etc. It it took until he was about three and a half years old, but one day he said, me, ma, and mama. I love that because that's when you are, are sticking with it and you're going to just trust God. And I love it because God does give us those little glimpses. And when we see that glimpse, that's when our faith engages even more. And that's when we start speaking more of God's uh, faithfulness and promise over that situation. We love those little glimpses of sunshine and a ray of hope. And uh, she even goes on, uh, as I was reading it, she said she used to uh, sing to him uh, for a long time. Uh, I believe it was uh, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. Uh, and let me see here. Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. And she said she wore that song out and she sang it over him. And later on, he began to sing that song back to her. And that's when you just, you trust God. And Lisa, thank you so much for, for sharing that testimony as well. And for anybody else out there that could be watching, if you've got a testimony, please, please put that uh, somewhere in this comment, because I believe people will be going back and watching uh, this uh, video as well. And then we've got some questions, Heather. I'm going to turn that over to you. And uh, some people sent in questions as well. We love Q&A, and then we're going to wrap it up with a little time of prayer, and we'll let you guys go out and enjoy the rest of your Sunday and be bridge. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the first question is, how do you keep your faith strong when it seems like what you're believing God for is so far away? 
I think it's what I said a little bit earlier. It's like get around the right people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure that you're not allowing your mind to wander, mm-hmm. you know? And if there's a small group of people that, that you know they've got your back in prayer, and it's like you, mm-hmm. those are the ones you share with, and, and it's, it's keeping your, your mind fixed on what you know God uh, has promised in his word, and just trust. It's like we have to trust God, mm-hmm. you know? There's a scripture that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in Proverbs uh, 3, 5, and 6. And I think we've got we've to hit that moment where our trust has to be in mm-hmm. God. Uh, regardless of what we see on the outside, uh, we've got to get that mental picture and that vision of God's word working and what we see on the inside. And, and it does get hard. It does mm-hmm. get tough. What do you do in those situations? I mean, Heather? I think, too, some practical things. You Whatever go. you're believing for, you have to start taking steps towards those things. You have to participate in, mm-hmm. in what you are believing for. So if you're believing for uh, a degree in science, guess what? You need to be studying some science. So uh, it's just both believing, knowing, seeing the end picture, and then taking some practical steps. Amen. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart because it's it's you partnering with God. and, And I believe a lot of times we sit back and we want to wait on God to do something. And I think God moves when we move, and it's partnering with him. And like Heather said, taking those practical practical steps. Great, great answer. Love it, love it. Uh, here's another question. You mentioned that your four Sundays are be a bridge. What does that mean? Be a bridge. Glad you asked that question, whoever asked that. Be a bridge. This is where, well, I'll go over real quickly, just a schedule of bridges, what we, what we do there. So, uh, you know, we meet uh, every first, second, and third Sunday morning in person of every month uh, at the Listening Room Cafe. That's where we meet in person. Uh, our fourth Sundays are online, what we're doing today. So we reserve those for online, but it's also our Be a Bridge Sunday and week, meaning we encourage our people, uh, whether, well, we encourage anybody, whether you're part of Bridges or not, uh, to go out, spend some time outside of the four walls of the church and go out and be that bridge, meaning ask God what he would like for you to do, or maybe you and your family to do, or if you want to get together with a group of people, ask God for an assignment. God, what do you want us to do to be the bridge, meaning go out and take your love, your mercy, your compassion, and show that to other people. So that could be different for anybody, being a bridge. Somebody could say, you know what, I want to take my, my neighbor a home-cooked meal, or I want to go out to the, to, the, to the grocery store and be a secret Santa and stand behind somebody in line, whoever God puts on my heart, and pay for their groceries. We're being a bridge. We're showing somebody the goodness of God. You know, the other day I I had to, you know, I, I, I had to preach that to myself because I can't sit there and say, hey, we're going to be a bridge and not be a bridge. But uh, we were at a, my, my son's baseball game and I carried this big old sign for three days out there. And on the sign, it just says, need prayer with a question mark. And I sat by that sign. And on the third day, everybody say third day, now I'm to preach because we all know what happened on the third day. <laughs> the stone got rolled away <laughs> and an angel said, <laughs> Let's see, I was going to go old school, but, you know, let me hone it back in. And so I carried that sign out there, and on the third day, I'm sitting there, and a guy steps up, and he says, is this where you get prayer? And I'm like, absolutely. And he said, man, I saw that sign, and I knew it was for me. He said, I just, he said, I need prayer to, to help get control over this anger that I've been feeling. And he's got so much going on in the world and this situation. He goes, I'm just filled with so much anger. So right there, I began to pray with him about his anger. And I gave him some practical steps to take as well. But that's being a bridge, meaning go somewhere and show the love of God to somebody. And that's where we take our fourth Sundays. And we're going to continue to do that, Heather. Uh, uh, for the foreseeable future, as be a bridge. Go out and do something that's going to point somebody to a loving God. It doesn't mean you have to go preach to somebody, or you don't turn or burn, or you need to get to church. No, this is where we take the church to them, and we take God to them, and we love people, and we encourage people. So we, we encourage our people, hey, seek God, you know, and see what he wants you to do to be a bridge. So that's our be a bridge on fourth Sundays. 
Uh, the third question is, as a Christian, it hurts my heart to see so much division going on in my world. What can I do to make a difference? What can you do to make a difference? I love that. I love that. Uh, I think what we can do to make a difference is to just love people. That's what I was going to say. So, so That's it. This it's, that, right it's that simple. You just got to love, gotta love people. people. Mm -hmm. You know, I told somebody the other day, I said, hate is not going to change anybody. Mm -hmm. Hate's not going to fix a problem. Hate is not going to turn a, turn a heart in a softer direction. But we just got to love people. Mm -hmm. And even Jesus said this. He said, <laughs> he said, all men will know that you are my disciples. He said, everybody will be able to look at you and know that you've been hanging out with me because of the love that you have for one another. And I think, it's, I think it starts in the church and it, then it goes outward, you know. I, I get disheartened sometimes when I see Christians fighting Christians. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, let's get that together. Let's love one another mm -hmm. and let's take this love outside and give it away to other people. But I believe that's the, that's the number one thing. It doesn't cost you anything to love people. It doesn't put you out of your way to love people. It doesn't cost you time, energy, money to love people. But just love people and be kind to people. And I believe kindness is a, is a key that can do wonders if, mm -hmm. if we just do that, you know. So it's a great, great question because I think we all... As Christians, we can see things going on, and it's easy to be like, "Oh man, this, this, this world is is uh, just man, it's just crazy." But it's like, okay, how can we bring some some sanity to that craziness? Is just loving people, mm -hmm. loving people. It's easy to love people that you. Back to the question, it's easy to love people that you agree with and that you agree on everything. It is a little bit harder to love people uh, that you disagree with or you have different beliefs or different mm -hmm. visions, but yeah. uh, God doesn't separate that. It's God called us to love people and that's all people. I was, I'm reading in the chat and I'm glad you said that. Uh, Don Barrett said, I'm going to get behind you in that line at the grocery store. <laughs> 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 you the man, you the man. And then uh, I love what uh, Becca put here. Uh, uh, she she goes. I hate the turn and burn theory. We do too. We don't. We're not. We're not judging people. Uh, then she goes. Loving people in this day. I'm reading in the comments. In this day of age is extremely difficult for me. And I think it's it's difficult. We just touched on that. It, it it's it's difficult for us. And that's where Becca. I believe we've got to get. Uh, it, it's it's because we're human. So it's not our love. It's difficult when we try to love with our love. Mm -hmm. But when we love with God's love. And a lot of times that's us, I believe, Heather, remembering how God loved us, remembering, you know, how we used to be or remembering when we mess up and how does God approach us mm -hmm. with pure love, you know. And I think that's the love that we give to other people. It's God's love. It's God loving through us. Mm -hmm. the, uh, because, you know, there are some people that are hard to love, you know, when we think about our you know, just there's some people you may see and all of a sudden you see them and your 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 internal temperature heats up 10 degrees. Like you just, oh, I don't even want to look at that person. Well, that's that's your love. But it's like, oh, no, let me love them with God's love. Mm -hmm. That's where we overcome that. That's where we overcome that a, that extreme difficult uh, feeling of loving people. It's God's love, God loving through mm -hmm. us. And we have to posture ourselves where where it's not me loving that person, that is God loving me through that person. So thanks for putting that, that, that in the chat as well. Uh, do we have any more, Heather? I do. I saw all the photos on Facebook from your Cape Cod trip. Oh, this is the personal one. How was it? Oh, cool, cool, cool. I love. Oh, look, Becca said that makes sense. Thank you, Becca. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So somebody asked about our Cape our Cod Cape trip. Cod Heather trip. posted pictures. And, 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 you know, that was... We don't do that often, but that was for my 50th birthday. Yes, I am 50, five zero, five zero. How old are you, Heather? I'm just joking. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> John is behind the camera. He's like, bro, don't, no, no. He's trying to save my life. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not as old as you. You're not. You're not. How okay. Okay. So we took a 50th birthday trip. I told Heather, I said, I just want to go see something I've never seen before. I've only seen in movies or, or pictures and stuff like that. And we went to Cape Cod. We had a great time, you we know. 
wonderful. We saw some whales. We went whale A lot walk. of oh. whales. It was quite an experience. It was just very eye-opening how small we are in such a big world. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So with that, we uh, had a great time. We ate a lot of seafood. Uh, went we to the beach a, lot a little of bit, uh, but we also did just a lot of sightseeing, walking mm -hmm. around. Uh, we ate ice cream every every evening. Every evening. It was like all of a sudden, like the meal was not complete without ice cream. But it was so good. I mean, that's see. my kind of meal. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we had we had we had just a great time. Our kids enjoyed it, and we just had a good good family uh, vacation. So thank you. So Cape Cod was just it was awesome. I, I highly recommend it. Yeah. If you've never been, it's a whole different world. It yeah. just feels like we, we were picked up out of Tennessee and placed in a whole different world. Just different experiences, a lot of history. Uh, it, was, it was enjoyable. And just time together with the family is always enjoyable. Exactly. Kids enjoyed it, and we were kind of nervous about them. We had to yeah. prep them like a month in advance, guys. This, you know, it's going to be kind of different hotel, um, different hotels yeah. and different stuff yeah. like that. Oh, everything was old, historic, yeah. built in the 60s, 1600s yeah, yeah, that yeah. we saw some buildings. It was really neat. Yep. So we had a great time. Thank you for asking that. Like I said, we don't do that often. That was the big five O and uh, just had a wonderful time though. We did. Wonderful time. So thank you for asking that. And, and thank you TripAdvisor as well. There All you the go. people with their TripAdvisor. Thank you for that unsolicited <laughs> plug for TripAdvisor. So hopefully hey, we'll get I mean, that, that's what we went TripAdvisor, by. TripAdvisor, any we CEOs at TripAdvisor yeah. watching, yeah. you can yeah. send that donation to BridgesNashville.com because yeah. we've just promoted you. TripAdvisor uh, <laughs> app, highly recommend. Yeah. So. Hey, well, listen, I think, I think that's, that's oh, about... Oh, someone asked a really important question. Did you swim with the sharks? Now, Don, you know, you know me better than that, bruh. <laughs> I don't do sharks, you know. It's so funny, we were watching the news. Then I woke y'all up, I said, hey, yes. this lifeguard just got bit by a shark in these waters down here in the, in the Boston area. Yeah. And to note, Jaws was filmed at, we went to Martha's Vineyard, yeah. and that's where ja the original Jaws was that's filmed. That's where Jaws was yeah. filmed. So, didn't you buy a Jaws t-shirt? I did. He wouldn't let me wear it. She I tried, I wanted tried to wear, wear it today, today. and he like, told no, me no. Okay, we got a okay. Jaws t-shirt. But uh, no, no swimming with the sharks. Uh, we did get out uh, in the ocean, and, and one of the oceans we were in had some crabs come up. I caught one. He did. I did catch a crab, dog. He caught it. So I could photograph it. Yeah, yes. yeah. And so we did that, uh, but no sharks. The kids were not happy about their Kids didn't like the crabs. crabs. Yeah. I'm so. not sure how they feel about the ocean. When we went to Destin last time, we saw a stingray, a shark. There was yeah, a baby shark. I did see it, yeah, yeah, last time we were in Destin. Yeah. yeah. I saw a baby shark about that long, okay? Yeah. I know you may not think that's big, but that's big for me. Stingrays, uh, <laughs> jellyfish. Yeah. Yep, yep. yep. So. A lot of stuff in the ocean, but it was pretty. It was sure it pretty, was. just sitting out there watching it and things like that. So, but yeah, great, great time there. But no, uh, you know, you'll never see me uh, recording a video like, hey, I'm going on this shark dive, and I got Joseph and John with me. They're going to be taking pictures and photographing. No, we just, you'll never, ever see a video of me going on a shark dive. I know you used to... People say never, say never, but I can truthfully say never. It's never gonna happen. I, I believe that. Okay, we're not gonna do the shot. I believe that. <laughs> so, cool. Well, listen, guys, thank you all so much for hanging out with us at Bridges Nashville. Uh, if, if this is your first time, I know a lot of people are on. If this is your first time watching us, hit that, hit that connection link there as well. And uh, we'd love to connect with you uh, uh, as well. Just to thank you for, for joining us. And then just a couple of things coming up, guys. Uh, next Sunday is our fifth Sunday. We're looking at trying to do something for that. Our fifth Sundays are reserved for uh, different things. Uh, sometimes we may take a sabbatical, which we may say, hey, we're going to just rest. Uh, sometimes we may do a worship night. Uh, but, you know, as we hit those, I think there's four fifth Sundays uh, in the calendar year. We're not sure what we're going to do next Sunday. You may, I'm going to come on on video this coming week and tell you what we're doing. It may be, hey, we're just going to take some time off and get ready for the fall season. Uh, in August to hit when people are you know back off from vacation and things like that. So just stay tuned with us on on that. And then anything else, uh, Heather? Um, 
Uh, oh, for the Bridges family, those that are part of Bridges family, you know, once again, we just always continue to thank you for your, your support, uh, whether it's mm -hmm. prayers or financial support to the ministry. Thank you guys so much as we continue to, uh, one of the things that we're believing God for is to just uh, get some a, a van, some transportation to where we can put all of our gear in that van and somebody can easily drive it to the location back and forth. So as you're, as you're praying about giving or supporting, uh, keep that in mind as well. If you want to give towards that, you can do that online at bridgesnatural.com. Uh, many of you, once again, just thank you for your just continual support uh, for us to do what we do, to reach people for the kingdom. I believe with all my heart, God has great things in store for Bridges Nashville. We're just we're just brand new into this, Heather. It's barely two months as lead pastor mm -hmm. uh, here at Bridges. And just, you know, I'm listening. As God speaks, we're doing. And so I appreciate you guys. I'm meeting with a lot of people that are that are calling me, say, hey, Adonis, can you, uh, that are reconnecting with us, Heather, that, hey, can you tell me more about what, what's your vision and what's going on at Bridges? And so uh, we're just in a season where we're trusting God as well. And we can look at you and say, it is well it is well so i'm gonna have one more comment here from becca she said it's shark week slushy at sonic so oh, plug out, okay plug out to sonic so sonic so sonic you can send that donation so to shark must be the theme com. This yeah, week? yeah 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 shark week okay yeah. i feel well now that you said never with the sharks i kind of feel like the shark theme keeps Coming, uh, Why don't you take the lead on that? You go dive. I mean, in the I'll ocean. go dive with the yeah, sharks. Yeah, yeah. I just want to know if you'll go. No, we don't have to do all <laughs> things together. <laughs> so. Oh, we don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it don't have to be that way. That's a solo ministry uh, endeavor. So you go do that. Okay. So I'll be here. You can. You can. We can do FaceTime. <laughs> oh, we're gonna face time. <laughs> face time be on that one. So, cool. But yeah, Shark Week at at, at Sonic. Oh, yeah, the go, slushy. Yeah, the slushy. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. All right. Thank you guys for being real, unpretentious, and always seeking God for His plan for your lives. Hey, Lisa. Thank you so much. We love all you guys. Uh, Judy, uh, thank you. This was great. Judy, Judy, we went. To, Judy, now I think I'm right. We went to high school together. Uh, that was many, 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 many years ago. I was thinking that, ago. but I wasn't going to say that. Many, Sorry, many, many Judy. years ago. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Even D said it's Shark Week. See? As well. I'm, I'm, everybody's, I'm thinking. Everybody's thinking about Shark Week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, listen. Thank you guys once again for, for joining in. Uh, remember, be a bridge to somebody. As And one of the things we want to do, Heather, as we continue to to uh, grow our Be A Bridge initiative or movement. We wanna, pretty soon we're gonna start capturing some, some video testimonies so people can share mm -hmm. how they were a bridge, you know? And uh, you know, one of the things I firmly believe in, it's, it's not so much as uh, you going and sticking the camera in somebody's face, like here, I'm down here feeding somebody, no, but it's like just sharing, hey, this is what you did, mm -hmm. and sharing that to give people ideas of what they can do to be a bridge, and I believe God's going to really bless that and and grow that, and 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 just as we continue to be an impact uh, into Middle Tennessee, so I'm excited about that. And then I do want to pray over everybody before we 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 go, and we'll let you go. We've been on for an hour. It doesn't seem like an oh hour, my. but it's been an hour. It's been an hour. It's been a great day. So Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for the time that we've had here together uh, at Bridges Nashville here in our home, Lord God. Just uh, being laid back, kicked back, and just being real with people. Uh, and uh, Lord God, it's my prayer that uh, somebody uh, put something in the comments or we said something that, is, that has helped someone's faith today uh, to keep them going forward and believing you, uh, even in the midst of a, of a hard uh, situation or circumstance. Lord God, we just know that you are good. You are God. I speak blessings over those that are watching right now, Lord God, I thank you that uh, that they've tuned in for such a time as this, Lord God. But that I that you would would bless them, multiply blessings around them, Lord God, and and speak into their hearts to be a bridge to somebody. And Lord God, I thank you uh, as always uh, that you are in full control of our lives, Lord God, and we're able to say it 
is well. We thank you for this moment. I thank you for the, uh, the guys that came out and helped us, for Joseph, for John, Lord God. I, I pray over Joseph, Lord God, as he celebrates his birthday, Lord God. I just, I thank you, Lord God, that, that, that Joseph is just a, a man after your own heart, Lord God, and he's just such a blessing to, to not just Heather and, and me and our church, but to anybody he comes in contact with. He is a blessing. Him and his family are so precious, Lord God, and I just speak blessings over him, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And I thank you for a great rest of this Sunday, a great week. We give you the praise, the glory, the honor in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. amen. Love you all, guys. Thank you for tuning in to us. And uh, we should do more of these. Put in the comments. Uh oh, if you think Heather and I uh -oh. should do more of these, well, we take some time just to pop on and be real. And not that we're fake, but to just be real, have some good dialogue and conversation. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe one day we'll move on to where we can do this, Joseph, uh, like on a Zoom platform, to where we can actually have people like talk back and forth in, as well. So we just want to connect with people. Guys, that's what it's all about. So God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your day. I don't know what, what should we do. Should we get up or let me, you know, I got to get my, my stuff. I mean, I have slippers on. Yeah, slippers. So I don't know. Okay. I, might, I don't want to lose so my slippers. She's not going to fall off. And thank you, John, for coming out. John is just a brilliant, amazing new friend of ours. He came out last week uh, to the church and uh, he's a photographer. So he came out and he uh, shot some... Uh, photos of the church and actually connected with Joseph. Joseph saw him out at an event they were doing and, and they got to talking. And next thing I know, I said, John, you read church with us last week. Now you're in my living room. I said, I said welcome to the family. <laughs> so it's all good. God bless you guys. I, I, I'm trying to segue out of this. I don't know how to, uh, but I'm, I'm going to just get up and, and walk over and hit the stop button, pause button. Wonderful message. Have a blessed day. Time for lunch. All right. I'm sure Don, you and Andrew will be posting yes. your beautiful lunch pictures. Let us know what you're having for lunch yeah. today. Because uh, obviously I'll be having a slushie at Sonic. <laughs> That's the closest to the shark you're going to get. That's the closest to the shark I'm going to get. Yes, both of y'all are amazing. Hey, Judy. Judy, all right. She said yes. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you for tuning in, Judy. All right. Curt hey, Curtis is watching. Becca. A lot of people are watching. Thank y'all. Somebody put a big laugh. I'm, we must have said something funny. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We talked about the age difference. Okay. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. And then I'm going to just... We got to get Karen. Well, I gotta